My dear half dozen friends, it is I here again, um, wanting to remind you that we are living in an automotive golden age. These are the good times. I've said this before and I'm saying it again and I'm probably not quite done yet because I don't remember, and yes, I am holding my mic because it's just the audio is going on a fritz again, um, that this 2022 calendar year has been an exceptionally good one when it comes to sport compact and sport cars. And I'm, I'm kind of bunching them all together because all well, the volumes are so low and I mean, it, it, these cars are designed for people like you and I who are enthusiasts. In fact, it is a good time to be able-bodied with a driver's license in North America because I, not since the 90s probably have there been such a variety of sport cars to drive. Sadly, there's only still just one convertible, if I'm not mistaken, um, but that's okay. I, I forgive all other automakers that have given up on convertibles. I digress, it'll happen again, you know it. Um, and what I've come to realize, in fact, in fact, 2022, right, calendar year, if all goes well, by the end of the year, I will have driven every notable new sport compact slash sports car available for sale with one, only one exception, and it's the damn Mark 8 GTI, because three times now I've tried to book it, and on all three occasions, it's, it, it's almost as though it knows what's gonna happen. Uh, it decided to misbehave, let's just put it that way. Um, but yeah, and, and this week, with this new 2023 Nissan ZZ, I, it, it, it's become clear to me that they're all good cars. And I'm saying that because, well, I know, next week, you know, in, in, in the time, next week from the time I'm shooting this video, I'm gonna drive a new FL5 Civic Type R, if all goes well, and the week after that, a brand new GR Corolla. Yeah, yeah. And so, knowing full well that those two cars are gonna be mind-blowingly good, and driving this car, I realized that they're all, they all have something to offer. There isn't a bad egg in this extended batch. Even cars, well, like the Z, which you probably already know, it's kind of a, well, what was once old is new again, right? Because this is essentially a 370ZZ, whatever, that's been, I guess, been to the gym, right? It's kind of the muscle car effect. I guess that would be the best way to put it. And, and believe me, you, it, beha it behaves like a muscle car on many levels. Um, and when I talk about like this extended segment, I am including like a high $20,000 Elantra N-Line, for example, all the way up to a $57,000 Toyota Supra. And this one, the Z, for 2023, the way it's priced and packaged, it's right smack in the middle of the action. I mean, within a few thousand dollars, you're looking at a Golf R, a Mustang GT, a Camaro 1LT, the Z, and if you stretch it a little bit, you get to a Civic Type R. It's really insane. I mean, if depending on, and, and insane too is that it's the, the variety, minus the convertibles, but the variety. You want a two-seater, you want a two-door, you want a rear drive, or do you want a front drive? Do you want all-wheel drive? Do you want a five-door, a hatchback, or a sedan? It's all, it, all of this is available to you if you have the coin, the, but the budget, I mean, between twenty-seven and $57,000, there's so many options. I love this segment because it, it, it reminds me why I love what I do. It reminds me that driving is an awesome gift that we are given or have given to ourselves in a way. And yeah, so the Z. I mean, I have to kind of like what I did when Toyota decided to bring back the Supra is that I have to thank Nissan for having done this because they didn't have to. Maybe they did, but they didn't have to, but they did anyway. And they put some effort into the design and they did a fantastic job. And, and probably what I love most about this car is that it is severely flawed, but flawed in ways that 
We'll remind guys, say, or girls, in their late 30s to maybe early 50s, remind them of their cars in the 90s and 2000s, the way they were, the way they behaved, the way they, you know. Um, and it's here, it's in this package. And it, I mean, a 20 or 22 year old is not gonna understand this car. They may be able to appreciate it because of newfound power, but they're gonna find certain things to be, well, you know, too much trouble, a little more of a hassle than it should be. And, and for that, this car is, is completely brilliant. And I absolutely love it. And for $46,000, I mean, that's an issue, but it's not an issue. It's priced smack in a segment, but other than the engine, I don't see how, other than inflation and costs, whatever, that it's worth $17,000 more than the previous base Z, which was $29,998, if, if I'm not mistaken. But that's neither here nor there, at least not anymore. All right, so uh, I pray that the audio is good. I pray that I will get to drive the Type R and the GR Corolla in the next few weeks. And so walk around, then to drive. All right, so visually, I mean, the designers over at Nissan just did exactly what it is they were supposed to do. And they made the Z, and I'm including all generations, um, be immediately recognizable in this car. Uh, it's an homage to the past. It's uh, recognizing the recent past and it just all fits beautifully. I mean, uh, the only thing I would say about the design is that I would have preferred color, but you know what, this, this slate gray or whatever it's called, I should have checked that, but I didn't. Um, it looks great. It's just fantastic. Um, I really like the headlights. At first I thought in the pictures it didn't look that great, but I love kind of the scalloped look where they made it, you know, cut into the fender as the first generation car did all those decades ago. I mean, it's just beautiful. And even the, the front grille, like that rectangular cutout, which kind of looks silly. Uh, in pictures, at least to me, uh, it really, really works nicely right here. Um, and the proportions are fantastic. You know, your, your typical long roof, uh, short overhangs, and uh, the hatchback profile is, it's just, just gorgeous. Um, I like the fact that there's a WRX back there in the background. It's kind of like lurking. Uh, my favorite angle is, is this right here. Three quarters rear. The tail lights are absolutely fantastic. I mean, they made all the right decisions here. The only non, I would not have just called it the Z. I would have gone full tilt and call it the 300 ZX because it's a three liter, not 300 horsepower, but still three liter and it's, but again, everything else about the car is visually superb. Okay, so price, oh yeah. And that also applies to the badge. That's just wonderful. Oh yeah, Katana Blade, while I'm talking about design. Whatever, it doesn't really matter. Uh, pricing starts at $39,990 in the US for the base sport. In Canada, $46,498. Now if you go up to the performance, which is the car you're looking at right here, in the US, it's $49,990 for the nine-speed automatic or six-speed manual. Uh, interestingly, in Canada, the performance with the nine-speed automatic transmission is $59,998, while the six-speed manual transmission, which is the one you're looking at right there, and yeah, that's a WRX STI way back there. I like that. It's $58,498. It's a lot of money. I can tell you now that, uh, actually wait, hold on. No, Matt, hold on. Okay, so in the base car, you got an eight inch display, 18 inch wheels, a 12.3 inch digital IP, uh, satellite radio, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. So essentially everything is there. And if you move up to the performance model, the one you see here, as I said, you get that synchro rev match thing, which, whatever. Mechanical LSD, which is possibly the biggest advantage you get in the performance. Uh, you also get the Nissan Performance brakes with the red brake calipers. Kind of meant to look like Brembo's, but they're not Brembo's. Oh yeah, and then you can see the Ray's Engineering 19-inch wheels, which are gorgeous, but you can always buy that aftermarket. Um, you also get, what else do you get? Oh, the front and rear spoilers, so you got a deeper front chin spoiler, and you get this uh, nicely integrated, I have to admit, rear spoiler. Um, 
I think, oh yeah, and the leather seats, I'll show those to you in a few moments, which are heated on the inside. Fifth, so basically $12,000 more for the aforementioned items. No more performance though, even though it's called the performance. I, I have a hard time, eh, the brakes fine maybe, but brakes also add weight, not necessarily performance. The wheels are gorgeous, I have to say. Spoilers are kind of nice, but okay, all right, so uh, enough of that. Uh, we can check the boot out. Um, the handle is down here. I love the new Nissan logo, at least this way, the way it's cut out. It's kind of cool. So Nissan says that's 241 liters of boot space. I can see it because there is no depth to it, um, but it works fine. There's a shot. The blue leather interior is just wonderful. It's beautiful. Always been a fan of that big crossbar inside. Uh, door handles are cool. This is your uh, intelligent key business for lock unlock. Um, I guess the performance, if you want the more details, you get all of that, which is which is nice too, but it doesn't add performance, right? But that's how they sell it to you. Um, but you know, this is this is old new stock, but still it works, right? So it doesn't really matter. Now the seats are superb visually, and the support is very nice. Um, no complaints there. Uh, so I guess it's time to slide in, zoom out. I hope the audio is okay. Clutch in, starter up, out of first gear. Okay, so there's your digital display, uh, which is configurable. You can change it as soon as it, there you go, change meter view. Uh, honestly, sport is the nicest one. Normal is kind of, it's okay, the tech is fine. Um, yeah, and then you can change also, there's a bunch of other menus. Anyway, what you saw before is a sport layout, which I find to be nicest. This, this is a beautiful thing because it's right there, accessible always. No need to go through menus. And as you climb over the steering wheel, which is actually really nice. Spokes are not too fat and the controls are just large and clear enough to easily work them. Your gauges, yes, that's a turbo speed gauge and the boost gauge and a voltmeter. So here's your nine inch display. I mean, it's, it's the most basic form of the nine inch display. I'm gonna try and work it through the, actually the phone. I got this, I can do this. Yeah, okay, right. So you have the bar here with the controls. So here are your settings and you can mess around with that. HVAC controls. The funny thing is that they don't light up. And when you play with them, they don't appear on the screen. So once you get in tune with the car and the position and all of that, you'll have to go with your gut for temp and fan speed because it doesn't show up anywhere and you can't see this at night, it's impossible. Small detail, old stuff, but good stuff. Uh, old stuff, good stuff. Uh, your shifter, just right, typical shifter to go into reverse, down and back. Very lovely, that's a little, uh, Little FYI, here's your Rev Synchro Banana Beats, whatever. Uh, old school handbrake, that's fantastic. And a driving position that puts you essentially right in the heart of everything. Uh, visibility is not great here, but it doesn't matter because you can actually you know, lean in around the A-pillar if you really have to. Um, but, but that's it. This is a, a lovely old school place to be and the drive is exactly that, so uh, let's go. Of the many things that I love about this car is, referring specifically to the manual transmission, it's not for novices. This is not like a, a Golf R or a Civic Type R where you can just clutch shift and move on. And this one you have to focus on what you're doing because the shifts are nuggety. <laughs> um, you, you need to be a little bit more in tune with what your hand is doing. with synchronizing your foot and the shifter. Too much throttle, like 2% too much throttle, you get serious rev hang for far too long and it's, it's annoying really. And if the performance will outsell the sport, it's probably for the synchro rev match because uh, it just helps tremendously. I haven't tried it, I'm just assuming it does. You know, with heel and towing and downshifting. Um, but but I love that. I love that. You gotta work it. I mean, if you if you do like a three four shift too fast, it kind of catches and it, it's like hung up between second and fourth, closer to fourth. Not grinding any gears here. I'm just saying, 
you gotta you gotta earn the shift and I, I totally absolutely love that it's just superb um, the muscle car aspect which I brought up before well that's the twin turbocharged 3 liter that we know was sourced from the Infiniti Q60 which that car should have been more and better and all kinds of things but it just never was so why not now it's doing duty in a car that deserves uh, you know the power that it produces uh, which is 400 horsepower at a 6400 rpm and 350 pound-feet of torque from 1600 to 5200 rpm which means obviously I'm trying to get away from traffic but my luck is just not which means it's always on oh, it really really moves this car and it feels so great the power is omnipresent but one thing is is lacking it doesn't sound it doesn't sound there's kind of like a just a basic bottom foundation layer of that VQ grunty burbly sound but it, it just disappears as soon as the turbos are fully spooled and they're pushing out all those PSI's of boost um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. And another awesome thing about this car is that just now, even with the LSD, oh, under hard acceleration, this thing becomes a handful. An absolute handful. I haven't tracked the Z, sadly, but I've spoken to colleagues that I trust, and that's how they describe it, a handful. And, and you can feel it. I mean, it's it's... You know, multi-link rear setup. It's a, a double wishbone up front, and uh, oh no, traffic. Oh, maybe I'll be okay. Um, even with these grippy Bridgestone tires, this—it's like grip is fighting G's, that is fighting the dampers, that is fighting all kinds of things at all times. And depending on, you know, the qual the the quality of the surface. Yeah, traffic weird. Um, Oh, oh. <laughs> it's such an angry muscle car, but kind of like the GTR in a strange way. I mean, when I'm doing this, when I'm under load, I can feel the tires, but only through my butt. Like, I know the front tires are doing their job, but not through the steering wheel. The steering wheel's feedback is not misleading, but it might almost be delayed in a way that is kind of strange so like the GTR I've always complained about the GP the GTR's um, lack of feedback because of its girth and weight and whatever power and somehow that's now been transmitted into the Z it's still fun and once you get over that initial you know puckering up <laughs> under a lot of grip and, and lateral loads um, you realize that there is grip there, but you got to get over that hill every time. It's not a huge hill like the GTR, it's more like a little mound. Um, but uh, yeah, so, and the Brem, oh, you say Brembo, the Nissan performance brakes, uh, they feel really nice too through the pedal. Um, oh, ah, da, da. <laughs> Oh, yeah, this thing, I don't know about the base car with this kind of power without the LSD. I'm thinking the traction control is going to jump in all the time. Uh, ride quality is about what you'd expect in a car that is many, many years old. Uh, everything is, is grainy and unfiltered. And thank you for that. This is what's going to keep a lot of buyers away from this car. But those who can appreciate and recognize, you know, the unfiltered, uh, real nature of this thing they're just gonna absolutely blow their minds over it one more in fourth gear whoa see this is the type of car where things are a little bit out of whack hence muscle car I like cars like the BRZ or even the Golf R with 310 horsepower oh shoot I should remember that um, there's a balance between the braking the handling the chassis and, and steering and all that um, but that's now been lost 
in the Z compared to the 370Z, which, I mean, had 332 horsepower and 280 pound-feet of torque. I should have checked that before I did this video. Um, but there was, there was a, a more, a, a clearer neutrality between the functions that made it a little bit easier to drive on the limit, like an MX-5 or even like a Type R, say my FK8, we'll find out about the FL5. Um, but that's also part of its appeal. That's why, you know, guys my age, anyway, will probably, or maybe a little bit older, are going to love this car. Because especially with a nine-speed automatic transmission, they're gonna go, you know, indie, and just lay patches everywhere they go, and uh, potentially make fun and short work of some Mustang GT and Camaro 1LT SS drivers because of the immense amount of torque just over idle um, yeah steering weight is fine I, I got nothing to say I love sitting this far back from the front wheels maybe that's why I can feel the tires I don't know uh, but this is just a, a tremendous throwback car that I absolutely love and the key, in my opinion, despite the spoiler, the brakes and the wheels, uh, is going for the base car for $46,000 and then getting an aftermarket spoiler if you need to, wheels and tires. And then uh, you got a bargain, you know, expensive car killer that might not hang with those cars in the corners, but in a straight line it will. That's it.